So last night I shot these portraits of Tia in my new super duper expensive studio. Only joking, they were all shot in my garage that is full of crap, bikes all over the place. My missus keeps moaning at me because I keep buying new bikes all the time. The setup cost me about 65 quid or so. The backdrop, the actual paper was 50 quid from a website that I can't remember, but I'll leave the link below. The tube that's holding it up is not even a curtain pole. It's like a, a pole that, you know, you put in like a wardrobe to, to hang stuff on. I think that was seven quid from B&Q. If you're in the States, I'm sure I think you guys have it. Is it like Home Depot or something like that, something similar? Cheapy pole. I've got two screw things up there that are screwed into the, the wood at the top of the garage. And that's it, to be honest. So yeah, that's my cheapy little setup that I took those shots with. But that's not the main focus of the video. Although it's quite cool, I've got my little studio set up in the garage here. I wanted to put my lenses to the test, which I thought you guys would be interested in as well. So I'm using the Sigma 30mm 1.4, the 56mm 1.4, and then at the end, I throw on the kit lens, just to see, you know, I think a, a lot of people have a sort of a preconception, maybe a misconception, that the kit lens is just crap, don't even bother using it. But I've used it a couple of times and it seems to be okay, so I wasn't sure how it would fare in these situations, because for these shots, I shot them all at F8, so I'm not relying on that big 1.4 aperture so much. I mean, obviously, you know, the quality of the photos, you know, might show, you know, in, in sharpness, but aperture-wise, I'm not doing all the shots at 1.4 like I normally do because it's like a studio environment. I'm shooting at f8 because I want like a sort of, you know, like a sharper image all the way through. So without further ado, let's slap on the 30 mil and see how those portraits came out. <laughs> So I started this shoot with the intention that everything was going to be edited in black and white. That was the plan until I tried out my Golden Woods preset on these pictures, which it completely isn't designed for, but seemed to work really well. So the remaining pictures are graded with that preset. Tia has recently started learning to play the guitar, so we thought we'd incorporate that into the shoot. Switching to the 56 mil, at this point I was really just trying out a range of poses. I was trying to get Tia to, in some images, look into the light, in some images be facing away from the light, just so we had a bit of a sort of variation of shots. This one has to be my favourite shot of the day. I also tried a couple of options with the light positioned above Tia, which gave a bit more of a loop lighting effect. We kind of just got a bit more experimental then and just tried using the guitar in all kinds of different ways, whatever we could think, just to, just to get a few more creative shots. Some came out better than others, but it was good to just experiment anyway. I think at this point T was getting pretty post out to be honest. Um, the garage was getting pretty hot in there because we shot these like in the day. So I don't particularly think that these poses are the best ones that we captured that day, which isn't the lens's fault of course, that's more my fault and Tia's fault, let's blame Tia. But that being said, I still think that these shots look pretty respectable considering that they're all taken on the kit lens. Coming up next though, we will compare an image from each of the lenses so we can get a better look. Okay, so I hate the term pixel peeping, but that's exactly what we're gonna do. I thought you guys might just be interested to see how an image from each of the lenses compares. So here I've got three images. All the edits have been removed apart from the sort of standard sharpening in Lightroom. So we've got one shot from the 30mm, one shot from the 56mm, and one shot from the kit lens. I've picked these images because I've just tried to pick three images where Tia's head is roughly the same size in each image. Okay, so zooming into 100%, we've got the 30mm on the left-hand side, we've got the 56mm on the right-hand side, which, as you can see, are both incredibly sharp. We've now got the 30mm compared to the kit lens on the right hand side which is at 33mm. 
which is definitely not as sharp, but you know, it's not a million miles away. Finally, I'm just going to compare the 56mm on the left hand side again to that shot from the kit lens, just again so you guys can see what they look like zoomed into 100%. I don't know if this is actually any use to you, hopefully, it is. So just to quickly go over my camera settings, like I said previously, I shot all of these at f8 because I kind of want the whole shot generally to be in focus. I was shooting at ISO 100, don't need it any higher than that because I can control the light, I want to keep the noise to a minimum. And finally, I was shooting at 160th of a second shutter speed because that's the optimum speed, I believe, with this camera to be shooting with a speed light. I can go higher than that with this speed light because it's got high speed sync, but by going over 160th of a second, it will activate high speed sync, which is great in some situations, but I've found with situations like this where I've done a couple of these kind of little shoots now, it really drains the battery down because it's kind of sending out multiple pulses to achieve that high speed sync. It really affects the recharge time on the speed light, which is a real problem when you've got someone that's posing there and you think, and I've missed a couple of, the other day, I missed a couple of real cracking newborn baby shots where both baby and dad were posing really nicely. I've hit the shutter and the flash hasn't gone off because it's still recharging because the high speed sync is caning it. So I've now learned to shoot, if possible, at that optimum speed, 160th of a second. A quick rundown of the gear that I was using. I was shooting on the Sony A6600, obviously with the Sigma 30mm, 56mm, and then the kit lens. And then lighting wise, the speed light I was using was a Godox V862 which is the one with the lithium battery in, um, which still is, is not that dear to be honest. I can't remember what the price is, but it's not too bad. I was shooting that into a Wallimex Pro umbrella, which was being held up by a cheapy Niwa light stand. And the only other thing I was using was like a Bowens S-mount bracket thing, like a trigger handle one that goes on the top of the light stand that holds the umbrella and you, know, you can screw the, uh, the speed light into. Just a little note as well, I did also do a few previous test shots using my little TT350S speed light, the cheaper one from Godox. It's quite small, it only takes up like a couple of AA batteries, but the results with that were just as good, so you don't even need that slightly more expensive speed light, a cheapy one will do. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed that. I'd be interested to hear what you guys thought of the difference between the lenses there. I mean, I thought the kit lens did pretty well, to be honest, you know, I thought it'd be nice for you guys to see that, that you know, I had it in my head that I had to go and get all this gear. I don't want to get into, you know, a, a does gear matter type sort of video. But I feel trapped to this. You know, when I got into this camera system, I sort of read all the reviews and everyone seemed to bang on about the Sigma Primes and stuff. And they are great. I'm not taking anything away. I do love the lenses. But for the studio shots and stuff, I was well impressed, to be honest, with the kit lens. You know, if, if, if you're like me, you know, you're not a, a full-on pro Joe photographer. You know, I'd class myself as like an enthusiastic amateur. I get the odd paid gig here and there, but ultimately I just kind of do it for fun, you know. I want to shoot nice portraits of friends, family, the kids obviously, all that kind of stuff. And I'm guessing that my audience out there, I'm guessing most of you are in the same sort of boat. I'm, I'm going to guess most of you probably aren't professional photographers because I'm guessing if you were, you'd probably be shooting full frame, you wouldn't be listening to me and all my crap that I've been talking about. <laughs> but you're probably in the same boat as me where you want a half decent camera, you want to get some nice shots of friends, family, you're looking to maybe move into photography a bit more seriously. And you know, that's where I am. You know, I don't want to go out and spend thousands and thousands on gear when I can get really nice results with, with all this cheaper stuff. So yeah, once again, if you did enjoy it, please do think about liking and subscribing and I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers.